Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you a cute pendant uh, that we are going to be making with Prima. So to start you're going to need a sheet of black clay run out on the thickest city of your pasta machine um, at least two millimeters thick. Mine is about two millimeters thick that's my thickest city um, and we just need enough to make one pendant. So I'm just going to take a piece of plain printed paper and another piece and I'm just going to give this a burnish so it's nice and smooth like so so we're getting rid of roller lines, fingerprints, everything which just give it a nice even consistent texture and we're doing the exact same for the back at the same time there we go, hopefully you can see there on the camera it looks better just sit around a bit Okay. then you're going to take some sort of a rounded square cutter or template and you're just going to make a mark. This is the largest uh, one in my full set. There we go. We, all, we only need a uh, mark right at this moment. And you're going to need some ball tools. So I've got a few here. I'm just going to start with a small one from another set that I have. And what I want to do is I just want to Draw a line down the middle because this is going to be important later on because what we're going to do is we're going to do large open holes on one side and on the other side we're going to place almost like little coral uh, polyps. So now we're just going to cut straight down and lift up. There we go. Okay, and just keep that line there and that black that's left over can just go uh, wherever you keep it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just use this to just make outlines of where we would like our holes to be because I want to be able to cut out uh, some with my um, a craft knife. It will make the entire process quite a bit quicker. So just continue doing that. And I'll just twist that around so you can see what I'm doing. Catch up on the camera. There you go, you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, and here is what I have. Let me just direct that. There you go. So you can see there uh, what I've done. So now you're just going to take a craft knife. And this does knife be perfect. And just trim out roughly around uh, where you want those holes to be. And it does not have to be perfect, you just want to trim out. Uh, as much as you can. Now I generally go around inside the lines rather than outside because you can always trim away more but it's harder to uh, add it back in. So always take less than you think you need in this case because otherwise if you take too much uh, you will have to restart whereas if you don't take enough you can always just gently add a little bit more. Or just take it away a little bit more back here. So just continue doing that. There we go. Now just take that excess black, pop it back in your packet. Okay. Now we're going to bring over a fairly uh, large-ish ball tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm gently going to start pressing down around these sides just to bring them in so that they don't have that sharp edge to them that the knife gives. And if it's a little Big, so that all too big. Let's bring over a small one and just start molding it. It's just easier to um, trim it out with the uh, craft knife first and then uh, start molding it and making it look pretty uh, with the wall tools. So I'm just going to go around and gently scrape each of these edges so that it's smoothed out much as possible. And now it doesn't need to be uh, smooth texture wise because we are going to be uh, adding a texture. I just want it to not have a sharp edge. It needs to be a nice smooth dome that steadily goes downwards. Okay. Like 
so okay and here we go so now we're going to just see about lifting this up with the piece of paper like so and now we want to just gently trim up uh, the back so you'll just go with your ball tool and gently smooth around these edges like so and now I'm going to be cleaning up the back so it doesn't need to look perfect you just want the edges uh, that you're going to see from the front to look nice so just go through with the ball tool and clean those up and as for the back we're going to be probably putting a layer of black liquid clay over the top uh, once we've finished so we don't need to worry about it not looking perfect that will definitely get taken care of but now you can see from the front those look much nicer than the ones down here okay so now that looks much tidier okay so now I'm just going to bring this over and give it a check see how it looks now you can keep the original organic edge if you want I'm still busy debating on whether I want to do that or not um, I'm going to have to think about that okay so I've decided to trim the edge so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cutter, position it in the best place and then cut down so that we have a nice clean edge again. Okay, there we go. I'll just draw away that excess and that should just give us a nice clean uh, border so that it's now still a rounded square shape. Oh, there we go, yeah I'm happier with that. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to just gently texture the top. So you want to take a nice smallish ball tool. So let's see, let me find a nice one. Here's a nice one. And you can use sandpaper if you want. But I thought that this would look quite nice. And you can use different sizes of ball tool. And you want to press fairly hard when you're doing this because we're going to be antiquing it later on. And I want you to just stipple this texture throughout the entire side. Um, of your piece. So just go basically down that line and just stipple it in. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to look nice. So let me just direct that so you can see how that looks. There you go. Okay, and here is the result. Let me just twist that around and show you how pretty that looks. So our last little step before we bake this uh, is just going to be to take a um, craft knife and I'm just gently scraping around the edges just to get rid of any uh, excess clay. Like there. Okay. And then we're going to bake this on a domed object for about half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature. And then after that we are going to apply our little coral pieces. And I like to do it after we baked it rather than when it is still raw uh, just because the polyps will keep their shape better and also they'll mold to the shape of the domed piece better than if we were just applying them to a flat piece and then doming you'd end up with a lot of uh, gaps between your little coral pieces okay so there we go I'm just going to gently take that up and I have a doming jar over here I'm just going to place that down. Okay, and then gently tap it. Don't press too hard because you don't want to be uh, messing up your texture. Okay, and just make sure that it's stuck down on all sides. Then you can take your craft knife and just remove little bits that are bugging you. Just moving around and sticking it back down. Make, just making sure that it's all stuck down because it needs to be sitting properly. And I think that looks pretty good. So we'll put this into the oven for uh, about half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature and then when that is done we are going to apply our little polyp pieces. Okay, 
And in the meantime, while that is in the oven, I want to just start creating our little pieces because they take a while to make and so you might as well do that while they're in the oven. So I have three colours here and they were, uh, let's see, ultramarine blue, purple prima and let's see what's this one called. Just look at the packet because I never remember this one's colour. Give me one moment, there we go. Uh, fuchsia, that's this one. And then I mix two parts of each of the colours with one part white. So one part white, two part ultramarine and so on for each of these so that we get a toned down colour. Okay. So now we're just going to take this and all I like to do is I just like to gently, well not so much gently, just press that together into a log just so that I can get it into a ball because it's easier to work with. Rolling that around in my hands. Okay. And then we can begin to work with it. So you want to take small pieces, like roughly the size of half a pea. Just roll it into a tube and then take a ball tool. Press it into it. And just begin widening up that hole so that you get a piece that looks like that. And then you want to do a bunch of those in each colour. And then later on, when our piece is finished baking, we can just stick them on. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. So it's still a little warm, but hopefully you can see how that looks. Now what we want to do you want to just have a last little look at these little holes and if you see any areas that aren't quite uh, to your liking like there's a little bit over here that's just sticking out okay. just take your knife and trim it because this is the last uh, time you'll be able to do this It should be pretty much all good. So now I want you to take some nice silver paint and this is the paint that I am using. And I'm just going to bring over a brush as well. There we go. Okay. And have a wet wipe ready as well because we want to wipe away this paint later on. And I want you to just brush it all over, get it into those nooks and crannies and I just work with a little bit at a time and make sure you just get it into all those crannies because we're going to be wiping away uh, the excess so it's important Okay, and then just do that for your entire piece There we go. Now you want that to dry a little bit and I'm just going to see if I can start wiping away the surface. The drier is generally the easier it is to do uh, to wipe away the excess uh, paint without it um, getting lifted up out of the um, pores. going to continue doing that and some areas are still too wet so I'll just repaint over those and I'll just give it some time to dry you don't want to if you're tempted to use a heat gun or something along those lines uh, to make it dry quicker don't do that because it will uh, cure the paint which makes it almost impossible to uh, clean up so just rather wait for it to dry you can blow on it that's fine uh, but don't apply any heat because it will end up curing the paint and therefore make it almost impossible to remove it apart from possibly sanding. Now sometimes a wet wipe can be a little bit uh, too wet uh, for it. So I sometimes take a little rag and I'll drag it across and that can sometimes be a better option.
because it's not wet, it's not adding any moisture and so it can sometimes be easier to clean up your antiquing. Now keep in mind it doesn't have to be perfect if you have some excess paint still that's fine because we're just going to get some very quick sand in a moment we always do this before we put the polyps on because it just makes it easier okay, and you just want to get that excess paint inside these holes off as much as possible because you're not really going to be able to reach that in um, when you're sanding so just try to clean it up as much as possible and then when we're done I'm going to show you how to very quickly sand it okay got my sanding papers here I'm going to start with the 400 grit And this will just clean up that top layer of paint. So just thoroughly clean it up using that. And then uh, once you've got rid of all of the excess paint, then you'll just go up through the um, other grits up to the highest one you have so that you end up with a nice clean polish. So there you can see how that's cleaning out nicely. You should end up with a nice pure black with silver dots. Okay, then we're going to move up to the next one. And it's important to do this because otherwise your uh, black is going to look more like a grey. It needs to be shone up with higher grits. Now I'll just continue doing that. Okay, and just before I do that, I'm going to just take some isopropyl alcohol on a wet wipe. And I'm just going to use that to clean up the paint on this side. And this will just save some time because I don't want to have to sand this side because it really just does not matter if we're going to be putting the polyps over the top. So just use the isopropyl alcohol to clean up that paint. And that should do a pretty good job. There we go. You can see that comes off pretty easily. Just make sure that you clean it up properly. There we go. Then I'll continue sanding. Okay, so here it is after doing the sanding. Hopefully you can see there that that has a beautiful shine to it on the side. Now the last thing I want to do to clean it up is I just want to take an earbud and some of that uh, isopropyl alcohol. The higher the concentration of the alcohol, the better. And then we're just going to go around on the inside of these and very gently just going to spin and that will just clean up a lot of that excess paint. So there you can see that working there. Don't be too harsh on it though because um, you can end up losing too much paint. Just be careful. Okay, I'm almost done. And it will just give a more sleek, clean overall finish. And the thinner the cotton bud, the easier it is to do. Okay. Okay, so now that we've basically finished that, the next step is going to be to add our polyps. So hope you've made those all already. So I've got mine off to the side and I'm going to be using some translucent Kato liquid clay. Any translucent liquid clay will work for this. And I just want you to add a little bit, you don't need a lot. And then just brush it on. And try not to get any on your uh, textured part. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit on but uh, it's best if you don't get any on. What this is going to do is it's just going to provide a uh, surface for us to stick our little polyp pieces on. Okay. So then my best advice is going to be to actually take a wooden skewer. Something that the clay doesn't stick to. So I wouldn't use wall tools. Use something that the clay is not going to stick to very easily. Just take that. And this is just going to help you position them. 
and stick them down like so. Now I'll just start with the blues and then just press them down okay, and this is why the liquid clay is important because that's what's going to cause the uh, clay to stick to the already baked clay and because and this is why you want to be using a wooden skewer because it's uh, the clay does not stick to it very easily and so it will be more happy to stick to your pendant than the tool you're using to try to get it to stick to the pendant. Okay, so I like to add a layer of the blues so, and just try to stick the polyps together it will add some extra strength. Just going to check them along the side here. Okay, so you want to make sure that they stick together, that way they will be nice and strong and sit together. Okay, then I'll make a ring of the pink down that end, and then I'll just march them up so that they're equal, and then I'll start the purple in the middle. Okay, so here is how it looks. Uh, you can add more colours if you want, but this is the number I'm going with. And I'm probably going to hang it. Uh, like this so from your angle it will look like that so the hole would be at the top over here um, behind because we will put a bale at the back but that is how it will hang now you want to bake this and then once it's finished baking I'm going to highlight the top of the polyps with silver so it can tie back to what we have over here and then we can add our backing and bale okay. and after baking you can see that the color does change uh, quite a bit. So now we are going to highlight it. So I'm going to take the same silver paint and I'm going to take one of these wide fluffy brushes. I'm just going to put a little bit of the paint down. Small amount. Okay, just gently dab my brush in that. I don't want too much. And then I'm just going to dry brush it over the surface. So, and just continue doing that until you're happy with the uh, amount of silver that you've got over the surface. You want to go slow because uh, we just want to brush the top of the polyps. So grab a little bit of the paint, then gently brush, then grab a little bit more paint and just continue until you're happy with the result. Okay, so I'm just going to bring over two pieces of plain printing paper and I've got a sheet of black over here that has been rolled out uh, to one millimeter thick and this is what we're going to create our bale with. Now the paint is busy drying off to the side, I will show you that in just a moment. Uh, in the meantime I just want to quickly prepare our bale. There you go, so just burnish thoroughly. There we go. And generally while it's on here I like to cut it, so I'm just going to grab a ruler. Let's see how wide do I want this? Probably about there will work. And I'll just pop this off to the side. We might want to use it again because sometimes I mess up the bale. So not screwing up a piece of paper uh, is always a good idea. Excuse me, just just realised I said paper. I mean screwing up the piece of uh, black clay that you rolled out is probably a better idea. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to just take this, which is about the same thickness is the cord that I want to use later on. I just want to curl this over, touch it. Okay. Trim, move this out of the way. And bring that over, gently pinch 
And this side doesn't have to look that great because it's going to be going down onto the uh, pendant, so you're not actually going to see that. You just want to tidy it up as best as possible around the edges. Okay. And I want to see if I can get this off. There we go. Good. And just gently touch down on that side and then on this side. And I actually might actually use a piece of paper to do this so that I don't get fingerprints. Go. So there's our bait. So I'm just going to pop that off to the side. We can use that in a minute or two. And here is the pendant. So it's looking quite pretty. I really like how it looks. Uh, if you find that this is a bit too much on this side, you can always bring the holes further forward. Uh, that's completely up to you. But now we want to tend to the back. Now, as I said, it doesn't really matter too much what the back looks like right now. What we're going to do. So we apply a veil and then we're going to apply a layer of black liquid clay. So I'm just going to grab the veil and I'm just going to take a skewer and that is what I'm going to use to place it by just gently rolling it onto the surface and it will be secured into place with some liquid clay, so don't worry about that. Just roll it into place. Press down nice and hard. Okay, just adjusting it so that it's sitting correctly. Okay, that looks about right. Then what you want to do is you want to just grab the same ball tool that you used earlier. And I'm just going to stipple it. And I, actually no, I'm not going to do that. Forget that. Because it's going to move the bale too much. I'm not going to do that. Forget that. I'm actually going to coat it in black liquid clay. So I'm using Kato uh, black liquid clay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run some along here. And by coating the bale as well, that will uh, make it even stronger as far as the uh, join goes. Okay, now that should be just about enough. I'm going to bring over a brush. I'm just going to bring over a small brush. I'm going to start with the bale first because I want that to smooth out over time. Just going to brush over the top and then I'll allow it to run. Then continue just brushing that liquid clay over the surface. Like so. Until you have covered up the uh, whole surface in black liquid clay and also have covered up the whole of the uh, bale in liquid clay. And this is just a nice smooth way to finish it without any hassle. Okay, so here's how it should look once you have finished uh, covering everything. Just make sure that you cover up the little silver bits. But everything should basically be covered in a nice layer of the black liquid clay. So you're going to bake that. Check the front to make sure that none have leaked through these holes. If it has, wipe it off with a uh, wet wipe. And then we are going to bake it, facing down on a piece of um, printing paper, like so. And you're going to bake that for a full hour, a pre-roast recommended temperature, uh, so that everything is completely and fully baked. And then when that is done, I will show you how to seal it. We're just going to be using a little bit of wax. And then we can uh, string it. Okay. So here it is now it's baked. And you can see that that is very nice and shiny now as a back. And here is the front. Now the last thing we have to do is just give this a uh, seal. Now paint generally once baked um, is fairly, um, it's fairly well stuck on there. You don't necessarily have to seal it. Though I find that it gives a nice um, little extra sheen. So I'm just going to be using some Renaissance wax. I'm just going to take that. 
And I'm only going to be buffing this black bit over here because I want to give because we took the time to sand it, so I want it to be nice and shiny. But I'm not going to be buffing these polyps because it might be asking a little bit much for them to withstand um, a buffing wheel. So I'm not going to polish them. They don't need to be sealed. I quite like their um, kind of semi-matte effect with that little silver highlight. Uh, and the back doesn't need to be sealed in any way either because that's just liquid clay. So I just want to fill in the side here. Like so. Make sure I've got everything. And then we're just quickly going to buff that. So bring that over. Should be all we need. It's just going to add a little bit of a shine to it. So let me just direct that around. You can see there how beautiful and shiny that is. And these I'm just going to leave the way they are. If you want to seal them, that is perfectly up to you. Just keep in mind that um, the buffing wheel will catch leaving hair fragments, and there is the possibility they will catch um, well enough that it could pull off uh, one of these. They're on there pretty strong, so they shouldn't come off with normal wear and tear. But putting a buffing wheel to them is kind of asking for it. So in general if you do want to give them a little bit of a shine I'd do it by hand and maybe with a light satin cloth, um, a light soft cloth so that you can um, control what's happening but I would not use a buffing wheel on it, it will end up tearing away pieces. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring over this ready-made rubber cord. Very easy to use. I'm just going to Apply that through there. It's a very plain piece, um, a very plain cord that will put most of the attention onto your pendant, which deserves all the attention. So that is basically it for this tutorial. It was really quite simple. Um, it's a little bit time consuming, I will admit that. Uh, the, doing the little ball tool marks does take a bit of time. If you want to save um, time on that, you can always use some sandpaper, but personally it doesn't come out as well. Uh, the little polyps also take quite a bit of time to do. Uh, so if you're looking for a relaxing project that's just going to soak up a bit of time so that you can listen to some nice calming music and have something to do, this is a perfect project. But if you're looking for something quick, simple, uh, well, it is simple. Quick. A quick project to do, just so that you basically spend an hour on the clay and have something at the end of it. Uh, this is not so much the project for that. This is a uh, relaxing project that's going to maybe take about three hours to complete, if you do it properly. Um, but again, it's really effective. Uh, it really is the polyps over here that take quite a bit of time, so if you can decrease the amount of polyps, you can maybe bring this line in a bit more and make the open space over here a bit more um, of the piece, and that would definitely decrease the time. You could also fill this blank space over here with something else. I thought that Pebia paint might also look quite interesting. Um, I might do a tutorial on that. Let me, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see this part over here. Uh, done again and then this side over here instead of putting the polyps on we maybe play around with some paper paint see how that looks let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing that because uh, that's another way that we could definitely do it there's a few different ways that we could um, finish off the side over here so play around with different techniques you could uh, sculpt a whole coral reef over there you don't have to just do the polyps play around with lots of things that you could do and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. Please do leave a like. And if you have questions, also leave that in the comments and I will try to answer that as soon as possible. And if you would like to support this channel so that I can continue making videos like this every week, please do consider becoming a patron. I have exclusive tutorials on there for patrons only, uh, as well as coupon codes to my Etsy shop as well. And it will also be a great help for this channel. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.